I'm gonna teach you how I got referrals to software engineering roles at Google, Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Tesla, and all of these other companies. And in this video, I'm gonna teach you a three-part system that you can use to guaranteed land hundreds of referrals at every single company you could possibly want to work at and increase your chances of getting an offer by 700%. Trust me, I haven't seen this strategy anywhere else online. This is truly incredible. But before I give you the tools and tactics that you need to know to secure dozens of referrals like I did, we need to take a step back and answer the question, what even is a referral? And why does it even matter in the first place? A referral is a recommendation or endorsement from a current employee of the company that you want to work at. Think about applying to a company like trying to get into a frat party. See, if you walk up all by yourself and just ask to be let in, chances are that you're going to be turned away. But if you tell them that you know a member of the frat, very often they'll go back, ask the guy you know, and if he says you're cool, you're in. It's that simple. That is all a referral is. See, these companies get tens of thousands of applications nowadays, and it's nearly impossible to even get interviewed if you don't have some kind of inside connection at the company. Specifically, companies like Google are known to have five to 10,000 applications for a role just one or two days after it opens up. How the hell are you supposed to stand out? Well, referrals are your secret sauce. According to data, only five to 7% of people who apply to Google have some kind of referral or connection at the company. But despite such a low percentage, 30 to 50% of the people who are hired at Google had a referral. That's a crazy asymmetry. That's what we need to exploit by getting referrals. Another study showed that referred candidates are seven times more likely to get an offer compared to people who cold applied via job board. Incredible. So if you want to 700% improve your chance of just getting an offer, just get a referral. But I'm on, it's not that simple. I don't have any connections. I'm not lucky and privileged like you. Before I gave you this ultimate system that you can use to 7x your chances of getting a software engineering job through referrals, we need to talk about the stigma against using connections. See, every time I mention leveraging your network, I get comments like this. If we don't have connections like you, how can we apply? You're so lucky that your family has all of those connections. But let me let you in on a little secret. That mega list that I mentioned earlier of all those Fang and name brand companies that I got referrals at, guess what? Zero came from my family. Zero of them. I got all of them using the system I'm going to teach you later. So it really has nothing to do with your family. And it has everything to do with the strategy you use to actually go out and get those referrals. But to take it one step further, we need to dispel the myth that connections come from privilege and are therefore evil. And I hear this all the time. And trust me, no strategy, templates, tools, techniques are going to work for you if you genuinely believe that it's unethical to use your connection or it's wrong to use your network to get ahead. Now, where does this idea that connections equal privilege equals wrong. Where does that actually come from? Well, like most things, it comes from history, where that was definitely the case. If we go all the way back to the Roman Empire around 2000 years ago, the Romans used this system called the patron-client model. In ancient Rome, society was structured around a system of patrons, where powerful families provided resources, connections, protection, influence to their clients, who were less powerful individuals, and in exchange, the clients would provide political or social benefits to the patrons. Now, this created a network where literally all of your opportunities came from who you knew, whatever patrons you had. And very often those connections could only come from who your family was, what family you were born into. And outside that system, any non-citizens or lower class people, unfortunately, had zero chance to benefit economically or politically. They had zero shot whatsoever. So sure, back in the day, depending on which family you were born into, you either had connections or you didn't. And because every single opportunity came through connections, you were kind of screwed if you just weren't born into the right family. And yes, to this day, some of that dynamic still does exist. I call this the ladder problem. The ladder represents connections and privilege. If we think of the top of the ladder as success where everyone wants to go, some people are quote unquote born higher up on the ladder. So they have less room to climb and they're already midway up. And for those born at the bottom, it feels unfair that they have to climb all of these extra steps just to get halfway or higher. So what's the problem with this? If the ladder problem still exists, just like it did in ancient Rome, why am I saying that connections are necessary and possible for everyone to get? The problem is what the fuck are you supposed to do if you're born at the bottom of the ladder? See, while it is true that people who are born with more connections have an easier time. Do you expect someone who's at the bottom just to roll over and die? No, the only way is just to work twice as hard and climb the ladder. See, if you believe that it's genuinely impossible, that it's unfair that you have to climb harder than some other people, that is a surefire way to fail. And if you're comfortable being at the bottom and not being successful, then sure, you can have that belief all you want. But while it is unfortunate that some people are unlucky and don't have connections, the only way out is just to grit your teeth and actually fight against it. So how do I know this is true? How do I know that it's possible to get all these referrals, all these connections, even if you have no born privilege through your family or friends? Here's some damning evidence that literally anyone can get 20 plus referrals, even if they have no connections whatsoever. This is Jason. 
Now, before I worked with Jason, he had zero projects, zero connections, zero hackathons, zero internships, no research. He had absolutely nothing on his resume. He even came to me and said, Amon, I have one of the worst resumes you've ever seen in your entire life. And even with Jason's resume and lack of connections, we were able to get him 20 plus referrals using our system. This is a screenshot where Jason's saying that he got five plus referrals and name brand companies in one day using our system. That's how I know it's not luck. I was able to do it 20 to 30 times myself with no family connections. And I was able to do it with multiple of my clients who also had zero connections whatsoever. Okay, so what is the three-part system that I use to generate hundreds of referrals for me and my clients? Before I teach you part one, just know that you need to use all three steps of this triangle for this to actually work out. Now, step one is to use what I said you don't need, your family and friends, people you already know. But Amon, didn't you say I don't need any connections? Why the hell are you telling me to use my connections that I already have? I don't have any. Let me explain. Yes, the next two parts of the triangle don't require any pre-existing connections you already have, but you should still utilize the people you already know first. Why? Because people you already know are way more likely to just give you a referral because they know you, they like you, and they trust you. And you already have their contact information, so you might as well start with them before worrying about other people you've never met before. And you probably already have a way bigger network than you realize. So you're probably thinking, none of my immediate family members or family friends are incredible software engineers at Fang Company, so I'm probably screwed. But guess what? I would define anyone you've talked to more than once in your life as a connection. So what's the action step here? And if you don't take action, none of this is going to work for you. So what should you actually do to leverage part one of the referral generation system? You need to open your phone, scroll through your contacts list, take out a pen and paper and write down a list of names. And the names you're going to write down are every single person in your contacts list who works at or might work at a company that potentially could have software engineering roles. And one step further, you'll want to write down anyone who might know someone who's at a software engineering company or is working as a software engineer. And you're going to be surprised by how many people you write down. I would bet that if you take my advice seriously and you actually do this, you're going to write down 50 plus names and you thought you had no network whatsoever. These are the people you're going to start with. You're going to send them a text message. On that text message, you're going to ask them to hop on a phone call. And if they work at a company that might have software engineers, they're going to ask them, hey, does your company have any open software engineering roles? And if they might know other software engineers, they're going to also ask them, hey, do you know anyone else? who might work at a company with software engineering roles. And that's pretty much it. If they say yes to either of those questions, you can just ask them for a referral. Now, of course, if the role isn't open, they're not gonna be able to submit a referral. But in that case, just ask them for a recruiter contact or a hiring manager email, someone to get in contact with at the company so that you can get a referral when the role does open. Again, this step probably seems so obvious to you, but trust me, I've spoken to hundreds of computer science students. I've worked with dozens of my clients and most people don't even do this before leveraging people they've never met before. This really does work. And I use this part one to get dozens of referrals before I even worried about people I didn't even know. But while you should start by leveraging your pre-existing network to get referrals, most people don't have a large enough network to cover every single company they want to apply to. After all, I didn't get referrals at Amazon, Meta, Google, Apple, Microsoft by using people I already knew. So what did I do? The next part of the ultimate referral generation triangle is to utilize your LinkedIn profile. Now, before I give you the secret formula, the ultimate technique that you can use to leverage LinkedIn into getting dozens of referrals, I need to explain to you why LinkedIn is so special. See, LinkedIn is a social media platform, but it's not any social media platform. The thing that makes LinkedIn unique and special is that you can search by people who work at a certain company. This sounds obvious, but it's really not. Where else on earth can you find a directory of hundreds of people who work at a company like Google or Apple or Amazon? Basically nowhere other than LinkedIn. Imagine what else could you do to get a Google referral? Just walk around San Francisco, beg people on the street, ask them, do you work for Google? Do you work for Google? That is what you would need to do if you didn't have a LinkedIn. LinkedIn gives you the ability to not only locate hundreds of people who work at certain companies, but you can also get in contact with them, which is absolutely magical. Now, here are three things you need to know to make an incredible LinkedIn profile that you can actually leverage into growing your network. Number one is to actually make a good profile. Most people spam out hundreds of connections, put zero effort into it whatsoever, and that is why it doesn't work for them. See, people don't realize that the person you're asking to connect with is only going to accept your request if they look at your profile and deem you someone worth connecting with. So you need to make your profile great. A LinkedIn connection is like a job application and your profile is like your resume. Make it so good and attractive that people actually want to connect with you. You'll want to add all projects, all courses, skills, anything that you've done in your life, add that onto your LinkedIn profile. The next thing you'll want to do after you build out a great LinkedIn profile is you want to find people who are similar to you at companies you want to work for 
and only connect with those people. Do not reach out to influencers on LinkedIn. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be honest with you. I get hundreds of LinkedIn connection requests and I don't accept like any of them because I don't have the time to look through hundreds of connection requests. I'm just being honest with you. So you don't wanna reach out to super popular profiles, influencers, celebrities. You'll instead wanna reach out to people who have smaller LinkedIn profiles, people who aren't getting tons of attention. And you'll also wanna send them a thoughtful connection request, something custom, something you notice about their profile that caught your eye. You need to put in work to this message to show that you're a thoughtful and intelligent individual. So many people spam connect without putting any work into it, it's insane. So actually work on these requests and you'll see your acceptance rate shoot through the roof. Finally, you need to put in enough volume. Most people send out 5, 10, 15 connection requests and then call it a day and wonder why they don't have a great network. This is completely idiotic. I actually have my students send out 50 to 100 connection requests a week just so they can exponentially grow their network and get referrals through that. See, people are just not likely to accept any one of your connection requests. So you need to send out a lot of them for anything to actually work. Finally, once they accept your request, you need to follow up with them several times and ideally get on a phone call with them and ask them for that referral. That's how you leverage your LinkedIn into getting referrals. While using your warm network and LinkedIn profile will get you a good number of referrals, the final aspect of the referral generation triangle is something I haven't seen on YouTube anywhere else. And this was the one that made all the difference. See, 50% of my referrals came through this final strategy using this one platform, yet very few people know it actually exists, which is insane. The final piece of the referral generation puzzle is to use the platform blind, but it must be done in the right way and most people get it completely wrong. Before I give you my ultimate blind strategy that got me 50 plus percent of my referrals, Blind is a platform where employees anonymously discuss work-related issues specifically to tech. Here, software engineers will openly discuss topics like salaries, company culture, industry trends, and finally networking, all in an anonymous fashion. Basically, the benefit of Blind is one, it's completely verified, so you can't say you work for a company unless you have that company email, so it's a lot more reliable than LinkedIn. And also, it's fully anonymous and you can message people directly, so no one is worried about their manager or their company seeing what they're posting. Here's how you leverage Blind into getting referrals at name brand companies. First of all, you'll need a company email to even make an account on Blind. That's right, not everyone can even create a profile. You need some kind of company email. So if you've already done an internship, just use that company email. And if you don't have any experience, you've never done any internships, you might want to pay for a Google Workspace custom domain that's exactly what I did, just so you can create a blind account before you get an internship. And later on, I switched to my Amazon email, which is how I had Amazon next to my name on blind. The more prestigious the company name you have on your blind profile, the better your results are going to be. So ideally, once you get an internship, swap blind accounts. The next step is you're going to download blind on your phone and then just go into the search bar and search the name of the company you want a referral to. You'll then see tons of posts come up and you want to click on those posts and then look in the comments, see someone's name with the company attached to it, then click on that name and send them a DM if you want a referral for that company. Here's what you'll want to send them. This is an example of a referral I got to a company called VMware using this exact same blind strategy and it worked magically. Now a note is don't use this exact template. If I have thousands of people sending out these messages, then it's going to completely not work for you. So make sure to switch it up, change it up. This is an example of what I did a few years back, which worked for me. Now a quick note here is that you want to make your message look competitive. So you want to hype yourself up. You want to seem like you're someone who's likely to be hired and if you're more likely to be hired, they'll be more likely to refer you just because these employees get referral bonuses for people who actually get hired. So that's why I have certain things in there. This is exactly what I sent. I just finished a software engineering internship at Amazon and I'm currently working as a backend developer intern for Shopify. I'm graduating from my university this year and I would love to join VMware as a new grad. I was wondering if you could refer me to the software engineering position. I've completed four plus software engineering internships along with 100 plus Leetco problems. Let me know if I can send you my resume and thank you so much for the help. And as you can see, the guy literally gave me his email and told me to send the job ID in my resume. It worked just like that. Now, of course, this is a numbers game. In my experience, it takes five to 10 messages for even one person to respond. Bond. So you're going to have to send tons of these blind messages out for anything to work. And it also works better for name brand companies because people who are at startups, smaller companies are not likely to have tons of blind posts out there. So you can't find their blind account. You'll also want to go ahead and just pay for additional blind DMs because blind does limit the messages you can send. But as you know, it's such a high ROI task to get a software engineering job offer. And any job offer you get, whether it's an internship or a full-time job, is automatically going to pay for every single blind DM you've ever purchased. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want me to generate 30 plus referrals a month for you, check out the top link in the description and apply to join the Software Engineering Accelerator.
Now that you know how I generated hundreds of referrals to every single company I applied to, there's some bad news. Referrals only get your foot in the door and make it more likely to get that first round OA or interview. So no matter how many referrals you get, if you can't pass the coding interview, if you can't pass the online assessment, it makes no difference whatsoever. So watch this video next, where I'm going to teach you how I got incredible at lead code so you never fail an online assessment or coding interview ever again.